What did you think of, of the selection of films out there tonight? Matt, do you want well, uh, I'll, I'll take it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I'm still speechless from that, that last piece. Just, just incredible. Yeah, but the, the whole range were, were just uh, another step up again. You know, we've been to, to many festivals now and, and they just keep on getting better. So, fantastic. Yeah, great stuff. Thanks, mate. Yeah, Seb, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I thought that the standard was amazing. And, and I think Matt and I were both saying the variety was fantastic. Mm. Five incredibly different films and yes. beautiful acting, great shots, great direction and fantastic storylines. I was, um, I think we were both massively impressed. Wonderful. Massively impressed by what we saw. Excellent. Okay, so let's, let's look at each one individually. Okay. Um, I'd just love to hear what you think of, of each. Just a couple of uh, ideas, per se. Um, Obdoc, tell me, what um, are your thoughts? I thought this was absolutely, sorry Matt, you happy for me to go for that? Brilliant. Um, I thought this was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And. Uh, it was funny because I, I know that when Rob was talking about it, he was saying that obviously it's a, it's a university piece and we've got obviously a fixed amount of time that we can squeeze it into, but I could have watched that for a good 45 minutes hour um, and been utterly entranced by it. I thought it was fantastic, great, really interesting subject matter because you think, well, a, a documentary on Southampton Docks, um, I don't know if it's going to float everybody's boats, no pun intended, terrible pun. Um, but I thought, uh, I thought it was fantastic. Um, and I, I wish, I wish almost that it had been longer. I could have quite happily continued to watch it. I thought shots were great. Um, I thought Rob did a, a fantastic job on it. Beautiful shots. Um, I love the opening sequences. I thought the soundtrack was great. And also, I think Rob's skill as, a, as an interviewer, I think getting uh, sort of real people just to kind of open up and talk about their work, um, I thought was fantastic. And you've got, in a very short space of time, real kind of warmth with these, with these people who do a, you know, a tough job every day. And, um, I, I thought it was fantastic. I was really, really impressed. Excellent, excellent. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> I, think, I think you covered it there, really. I mean, yeah, once again, just, just charming characters and, and you know, the, as you say, the, the skill of Rob in, in getting the uh, information and, and uh, the, the, the sort of personality behind these, these workers down on the docks, that, that really came through. And, you know, lovely pace. I felt, you know, that the soundtrack sort of drove it along and, and what could have been quite a relatively mundane sort of subject matter in places, but, but it really did, you know, the, the way the film was put together, it, it, it moved it along at an excellent pace, and you're right, so you could have watched it for a lot longer, and uh, you know, there's a lovely contrast between the, the sort of calm before the, the, the ship came in, and then the chaos of, of unloading and unpacking and everything mm. else, you know, so the day sort of really did unfold in front of you. It was, yeah, lovely, lovely piece. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I enjoyed the... Um well, it's, it's an observation documentary, so um, as Rob has actually said, you can't really um, use so many direct interviews. There are a few there to, to allude to an understanding of what's going on, but it is that fly-on-the-wall idea. You, you see what's going on. You don't need to say, and now there's a boat pulling in. You see the boat coming in. It's <laughs> exactly. There. But um, exactly. effective. I really enjoyed yeah. that. It was so professionally done as well. I, I think I... I mean, if that had come up on sort of BBC Three and you're watching it, I mean, the quality, the professionalism of the piece was fantastic. I thought it was amazing. Yeah. Really, really impressed. Excellent. Okay. Thank you. Um, now, Nightmare at the Colwell Centre. <laughs> A wonderful piece. What do you reckon? Great fun. Yeah. Absolutely. I think we both agreed. We, we spoke about it in the, in the interval and just, just great fun from start to finish. And some, you know, it's a, it's a classic underdog tale, isn't it, really? And, and we felt for, you know, Colin Doyle, I think his name, you know, the, 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 the night security guard and you know, the contrast of this, this guy trying to prove himself as well. You know, there's still life in this dog yet, you know, and he's mm -hmm. uh, against the, the, the younger manager and so on. I, I just, I loved all of that and the, the character development. Um, again, you know, the, the, the sort of you know, messages about little town centres today as well, you know, they're all closing down and deserted and, and you know, if anyone's walked through Basingstoke Town Centre yeah. on a Saturday night, a lot of zombies and, and sort of drug and drink fueled uh, revellers and so on. So, I, I, you know, all of that worked very nicely and it's great fun. Yeah. Definitely. Cool. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, I completely agree with what Matt said. I, I think, um, I thought it was very, very funny. I thought brilliantly executed. Um, <laughs> I love the character of Nan. Uh, both pre-zombie and then post-zombie, I thought um, that was absolutely, actually, did Matt play? Possibly Matt, yeah, brilliant. It was fantastic. I thought, I recognise Matt as now. Um, but I, I thought direction was, was superb. It's, it was quite interesting, actually, because I thought 
Um, Matt made a really pertinent point, and I think it's very true in how difficult it is to try and get extras and, and actors involved when uh, obviously you, you want to do it as a, as a paid job, and it's sometimes very difficult as a director um, trying to make kind of good quality films and, and trying to sort of get the people in to do them. But um, actors love doing these films. Honestly, they're, they're brilliant because not only does it look great selfishly on their showreel, but it's great exposure for them and it's, it's great work. And I think you've got, you know, really talented up and coming directors like Matt, you know, people want to work with him. And I think, um, you know, there are loads of great websites like Casting Call Pro and Castnet and Talent Circle where you can get actors involved. And, you know, I know for a fact that I will do basically anything for a sausage sandwich and a man hug. So if an actor you know, is involved, you know, we are that kind of film thing. here. Yeah, right? purely film. Right, right, um, good. See me afterwards. Interesting. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's great, and you can you can get people involved in it. But um, I thought Matt did a great job. I thought the fight sequences were great. Um, I think perhaps the only thing I would pick up slightly was I thought the editing was superb. The script was great. Um, maybe just a little bit more zip in the dialogue between the actors. But that was the only thing that I could pick up on. Um, it's not a negative thing. It was just it was a brilliant film. I thought brilliantly shot, and um, yeah, I think we were both massively impressed by it. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Antithesis by Miss Alice Stover. Another touching story. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I did say I'm a little bit biased, obviously, with uh, Alice having attended and, and only just recently left Queen Mary's College. But um, yeah, a, a very poignant piece. Um, you know, a wonderful juxtaposition again of, of age and youth, I felt. And, and you know, the, the idea of, of memory being dealt with here in, in such a, a, a careful way, just, just really, really. Um, yeah, reflected through the, the setting, and I, I thought it was interesting that the, the library wasn't the initial choice, but, but I felt the, the idea of books and holding of memories was, was excellent in, in, this, in this setting, and sort of non-linear narr sort of narrative and of, of, of memory itself, and this idea of, of emotions and connections to people and places and a certain time really came through with, with the watch as well, and the, the passing on from one generation to the next. I, you know, it was just... Uh, succinct and to the point and moving and, and all in, in such a, a short space of time. I couldn't believe how much emotion came through. It was, it was fantastic. Brilliant, brilliant. Thanks, Matt. Yeah, Seb, again, completely agree with what Matt said. I, I feel very lucky. This is the second of, uh, second of Alice's films that I've seen. Um, and I love The Birdcage. I thought that was superb when I saw that. And she is, um, I think she's very bright. I think she's very intelligent. I think she's a wonderful filmmaker. And um, I think we can expect massive things from her. I was so impressed. I agree. It was, um, it was a beautiful film. Um, I felt a little bit of a tear halfway <laughs> through. The bit where the granddaughter places the watch, the grandfather's hand, and you can see his hand trembling. And oh, I thought, I thought that was just beautiful. And I think Matt made a great point about the books and how much history is, is captured in that. And um, I thought the, the beautiful thing, and I, I love color in film particularly, and I thought Alice did a, a great opening sequence where it was deliberately kind of overexposed, that kind of soft yellow hue at the beginning and then contrasting that with the black and white and mm. um, the sea with the grandfather kind of picking up his granddaughter and everything that the sea captures as a, as a symbol and, and the age and the wisdom of the books. I thought it was brilliant. So much symbolism. Um, rich, gorgeous, sensitive, um, beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of work and I think she's, um, I think Alice is fantastic. I think we both, both agree on that wholeheartedly, don't we? Yeah. It was wonderful. It was great film. Well done, Excellent. <laughs> right. The Lion's Share. Very interesting piece. It's, I've, I've not actually <laughs> seen many short films which actually use this, uh, this tool of having um, narration to camera um, it used in this way. I think it was quite, quite effective. Um, a couple of moments, I wasn't entirely sure that it worked at every single point, but it is a very effective way of getting a story across. What do you think? Yeah, I, I, I felt that worked very well in the sense that, that Fox was, was a character that, that we were asked to identify with, and, and we did. He was, he was a, a believable, uh, likable, it was a likable performance in terms of uh, the way he dealt with us as, as the audience and directly delivered his, his narration to us. Um, 
I felt that, that in, in that sense, um, with, with Fox, I thought, you know, great actor, absolutely fantastic performance, but, but I don't know if I believed him in that role of thug. Mm. You know, he was, he was almost a bit too innocent and nice, and, you know, he's, he's kind of your mate, isn't he, this guy? And, and, you know, you didn't want to see him get ripped off, and you didn't want to see him sort of come out of this, you know, out of pocket and, and having risked everything for, for nothing. But, but, again, maybe that was part of the skill of... of the, the casting as well, in, in that, yeah, we, we didn't want to see him get ripped off. But, but, yeah, in this gang, I didn't think it really, really fitted in with the kind of big burly meatheads and the other guys <laughs> that were in the, in the gang. Um, I found it interesting that Jennifer said that, that she didn't feel the lighting worked particularly well in places because I thought that was, was great. I thought, I thought that it worked really well outside. Um, it's very, very difficult to shoot at night and, and in the dark, and, and I felt that that, that came off very well. Um, and yeah, again, you know, the shooting on a, a little DSLR and the film start looked amazing, didn't it? In terms of um, the way the, the whole piece felt and looked and so on, it, it, it did. Uh, you could tell that she's got a, a background in photography, so yeah, it was fantastic. Thanks, man. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it was it was an interesting film. I liked it very, very much. I thought um, young actor who played Fox, I thought it was fantastic. I agree with Matt. I think in terms of the casting, because. Um, he's obviously a good-looking lad, um, but you, I don't know, it's in, in some ways there's a little touch of almost like a, almost like a baby-faced Danny Dyer about him. You, you know, you're willing him to do well and he's enthusiastic and you think, oh, you know, I want this guy to be our hero, to succeed, even though obviously he's involved in a, <laughs> in a sort of like a nighttime robbery. But um, I agree in terms of the casting. I thought terrific young actor, great enthusiasm, great passion. Uh, I love the, the narrative, love the narration style. I'm a big fan of that in film anyway. Um, and I think that worked really well. Uh, would you believe he was a thug? Perhaps a little bit too pretty to be one. But, but you know, that's, that's an interesting casting choice. And sometimes it's, it's quite a shot. You've got three big, strong, burly lads. And you know, this, um, this kind of like cheeky chappy, this charmer who's come in, who's obviously trying to work his way up the ladder. And, um, and there's room for a sequel. I think that's what's so exciting. It's so open-ended at the end. And um, what's, this, what's this guy going to do to come back and get his cut? And uh, I think perhaps the only thing I would pick up, there was a great sort of tension scene at the end where they're obviously kind of splitting the cash. I would love some juicy close-ups there because you've got actors who are obviously working their socks up and you can't really sort of pick up all the, the kind of the details that they're going through. But um, I thought it was a great storyline. Definite room for a sequel in there as well. Excellent, excellent. And now our, our final piece, Zion. Right. Oh, are you happy? Um... It's a difficult one to know how to start with it. I, not only for me was it my favorite film of the night, but I personally think it is the best short film I've ever seen. Um, really? It was, it was staggering, everything about it. I thought the performances were superb, the shots were amazing, the direction was incredible. Um, tour de force performances, I just thought it was superb. I think Shamari, who played Zion, was outstanding. I think we can expect massive things from him. Uh, no pressure, Shamari. Um, <laughs> but uh, I thought it was superb. The story was wonderful in it. I think reflecting on a young man's struggle to try and make you know, something good for himself, and, it, and it's tough, it's a tough climate. Um, I thought the performances were, were absolutely wonderful. I loved that there was a great, the initial, the first fight scene that we see when all the lads, when the two gangs square up together, the actor who breaks them apart, that was one of the most brilliant scenes I think I've ever seen. Superb. Really gritty, really edgy. Um, I thought it was just beautiful. And I loved, I loved the ballet scene as well and the fact that you've got these silhouettes and they're merging together and the relationship between these, between these two protagonists I thought was um, fantastic. Amazing film. Amazing. I thought it was absolutely superb. Uh, yeah, loved it. Big fun song. <laughs> Yeah, couldn't agree more. Um, I, th I think what, what struck me was, and this is not to take anything away from, from any of the other films shown tonight, but, but throughout each of, of the other films, Dave and myself, we, we were both sort of frantically scribbling away little notes and, and little points and so on. I think, I think throughout the, the, the length of this film, we were just transfixed and sort of almost jaw on the floor stuff. It was, it was just incredible from start to finish. And um, I, ju I just love the... the, the, the the sense of, of the source of knowledge in Imani's character and, and the, the role model that, that you know, she, she was um, and, and that, that she really inspired this, this young man to try and do something different with his life and, and to, to take himself away from what 
what I, I read as, as a performance of gang behavior, this, mm. this, this idea of playing a role and, and this certain type of masculinity that, that comes from uh, a, a sort of gang mentality and, and you know, the, the juxtaposition of that with, with the ballet as well, this, this idea of a performance and, and, and maybe, I, I don't know, with the, the silhouetting of the performance within the ballet, the, the sort of hidden depth and beauty and talent that, that so many young people have and yet it isn't tapped into and, and isn't allowed to flourish and grow because so many lives are cut short and, and that just, yeah, it was, it was very, um, just, just so many messages in, in that film that, that strike a chord with, with so much that we see in the news today. It's just excellent. Definitely. It's, um, I think what, what chimed mostly with me is it's, it's this question of how do we inspire this new generation when we turn on the TV and the vast majority of what we see, especially now, is negative. Mm. As in, okay, there, there may be a recession, there may be fewer jobs and this sort of thing. How, how, do, we, how do we motivate people? How, how do we show what could be achieved? But how do we actually show a realistic presentation of, of the difficulties uh, within life? Uh, because without actually seeing them and understanding them, we can't even start to address them. So, impressive. Very, very impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Just a beautiful film. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought it was. Um, I thought it was absolutely staggering. Absolutely staggering, and brilliant to watch. And I think Matt raised a brilliant point. I think um, it was so difficult because I can remember watching it, thinking, oh, I'm going to forget it unless I write that. Oh, I mean, I've missed a bit, and you almost want to rewind it. But it was superb, absolutely superb. But all five films were magnificent. I think we were just so impressed by by the level, and it's so difficult. You know, you're trying to shoot on a shoestring budget um, and you've got all these wonderful performances and I think it's so great that we've got this said in terms of like you've got a great platform to get your work seen because um, it deserves to be seen it's right and it's important and I think particularly with Zion that we've seen the messages the reflection on modern day society is, is superb brilliant brilliant work I think from everybody well it's an absolute pleasure to, uh, to see these films and absolutely um, now, just a, a couple of points here. Now, something very important I did want to raise about uh, Mr. David Holby here. Now, if you could briefly explain um, what you did very recently regarding a record-breaking row. Oh. How, how did this come about? Um, oh, crack you, Seb. So, I... <laughs> I feel ridiculous talking about it, but uh, I, I um, set out to try, <laughs> to try and row the distance uh, around the Earth's equator but doing all the miles on a, on a static lab rowing machine. So um, I was based over in the Moore Shopping Centre in town. Um, and for about two and a half years, um, about sort of six to seven hours a day, five days a week, I'd just sit on the rowing machine and, and sort of go up and down. And it was raising money for a brilliant charity called Breakthrough Breast Cancer. Um, and that was fantastic. And, and the, the world record attempt was a, a Guinness world record attempt and just about managed to sort of drag my skinny body through that. And, and that finished just prior to Christmas not last year, but, but the year before, um, sort of end, of end of 2010. And um, it was brilliant for me, two and a half of the most wonderful years of my life. And kids were amazing. I think we just live in the most brilliant town anywhere in the UK. And um, it, was, it was fantastic. It was a life-changing experience for me. And um, I kind of finished and physically was a bit, a bit kind of shot up and, and a bit destroyed. So I, I kind of... I uh, did the London Marathon then in, in the April and, and sort of did like... Of course a, you would. <laughs> yeah. Why not? Uh, dressed as a gorilla, uh, wearing a bra. Uh, so that, that was great. <laughs> I ran that with a few other lads and that was brilliant. Um, and then I uh, kind of got married in the summer and moved house. So everything was a bit kind of crazy. Uh, but everything sort of settled down now. So I, I thought what I'd try and do is now kind of try and take on a, another charity challenge uh, for Breakthrough. And, and the target this year... Um, I mean, I was rubbish at rowing. I'm even worse at running. But it's to try and run uh, a thousand miles in in a year. Uh, of course, all the money we raise goes goes to Breakthrough, and um, that's kind of including the training miles as well. But hopefully, to try and run as many sort of ten milers and half marathons and marathons as I possibly can, sort of around the country, flying the flag for Breakthrough. And um, we've got another rowing world record attempt uh, at the end of October. So I've got a few months to try and, try and get my fitness up for Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Which um, record is that you're going to be trying to uh, So this break? will be, um, I only managed 30 hours last time, so I've got to try and pick it up quite a bit. But it's a, it's a record attempt for the longest continual um, endurance row. So it's 76 hours non, non-stop of rowing. 76 so hours of rowing. 76 hours of rowing. I'm, 
pretty rubbish after six, so it's, it's going to be a bit of a struggle. But I'm, I'm hopeful, hopeful that I've managed to sort of try and get through. And again, raising money, this time for the Pink Place local Basingstoke charity, who are fantastic and so deserving of funds. And hopefully we can, we can raise lots of pennies for them. Absolutely. Um, there is going to be a collection pot outside in the foyer, so that when you go out, if you do Bless want to you, donate, then uh, that's a place you can do that there. Please do. It's a wonderful charity. Congratulations. It's a wonderful <laughs> achievement so far and the very best of luck Thanks. with uh, Thank you. your next endeavour. That would be brilliant. And I must say, congratulations and well done to every single filmmaker Absolutely. here. Uh, all of them, uh, not just uh, tonight, but also yesterday. It's a weekend <laughs> festival. We've had a number of wonderful films. You've all been amazing. Your work is fantastic. And I'm just proud to be able to actually screen your work and make sure that the press talk about it, make sure that word is spread about all these achievements because it needs to be done. Um, and thank you very, very much, everyone who has taken part. The audience, the film fans, the filmmakers, everyone here, our guest panelists, our fantastic guest panelists, the staff here in Central Studio, our technicians, um, our camera operators, everybody. Thank you so very much. And um, I look forward to the next one. And details for the next film festival will be on the website very, very soon. But a big round of applause to absolutely everyone, our filmmakers, our guest panelists. Well done, everyone. Well done. <laughs> right, well, uh, that's it for this particular festival. Um, go out to the foyer, have a chat with everyone. If you have any questions, please raise them. All of these filmmakers are really very friendly. And these panelists, of course, as, as you can rightly tell. Thank you very much again, everyone. And uh, I'll see you at the next one. Thank you. <laughs>